In my past videos, I've been talking about the upcoming US stock market crash in 2021. And based on yesterday's drop of almost a thousand points on the Dow Jones Industrial Average in the US markets, could this finally be the moment that we've been waiting for? In fact, we're seeing a dramatic market sentiment shift in the global markets and a risk off mentality amongst investors. As of now, global stock market indices are falling in Asia, Europe, Australia, Canada. Cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum have seen prices fall over 10%. Commodities affected by China's collapse are affecting prices of oil, iron ore, steel, and other metals. In fact, there are only two asset classes that are positive from this market drop, and it is gold and bonds. And right now, investors are treating these assets as safe haven assets. So in this video, I'm going to go through the technical charts of all the asset classes and give you my take on what's going on. Let's get started. We are never going to be able to predict what the exact catalyst of a stock market crash may be, but now we know, and it's the collapse of China's second largest real estate developer, Evergrande. You can see based on this chart, the stock price has fallen more than 90% from its 2017 peak. The reason is the firm owes $300 billion in debt, which is the world's largest debt held by a property developer. And the biggest concern is they missed an $80 million interest payment on its debt just yesterday, and is poised to miss another bond payment this coming Thursday. This has led to fears that the company may go under and hurt the entire China real estate market, which actually comprises of 25% of China's economy. Now, the reason why this has startled investors is a potential repeat of the 2008 financial crisis caused by Lehman Brothers due to their exposure to the collapsing U.S. real estate market. Now, the China government has already signaled that there will not be a bailout of the company. And in fact, if the company does default on its debts, its forced property liquidation could hit property prices all across China. And this is significant to China's economy, especially when there's so much personal wealth tied up in real estate and not to mention years of sky high property prices could finally lead to a crash in prices if people are forced to sell. So if China, the world's second largest economy falters, then the whole world could be impacted. Before we take a look at the charts of all the asset classes, Please take a moment to like this video. I would really appreciate your support. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the S&P 500 index. So we can see here, this has been the wedge pattern I've been looking for for a long period of time. And what is the key part here is I want to show you guys here. It's so it broke right here, right? But it was very, very choppy. But the thing that I actually like about this is it's actually consolidation here, right here. And it broke right here. So we actually broke uh, two days ago, uh, basically at the 4440 mark, and we've broken down and it actually uh, went down very, very sharply yesterday. And the now, obviously, you can see this long tail here, so it actually went as low as 4309, but recovered quite sharply, and in fact, actually recovered almost half of its losses. And what I'm suspecting is since we broke this uh, wedge pattern here, is even if it tries to go up, what my thinking of is, is it's probably going to retest that 44, 40 level and then head lower from here. Uh, now, if it doesn't test, uh, the target here is probably 4240. Now, let's take a look at the next index, which is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is the index that dropped over a thousand points. And you can see right, it actually hit this level right here, okay, which was support at the 33. 1600 level and again you can see it recover uh, a little bit of that and the key aspect here for this particular index that I was been noticing is especially when I like to see any type of a drop I don't want to see a big drop just like that I want to see essentially a consolidation and then a drop right so you can see right here it broke this level at 34,509 and then went lower so my suspicions is if it does go up higher, it will test this level again, 34,509. If not, then I suspect the next level that we're looking at is it has to break this 33,600 level. So it might consolidate here because it's such a big move, but uh, 
in the end, what I'm either looking at is either breaks up out here. If it does break above here, we're probably going to test uh, all time highs again. If not, uh, we are heading much lower. And uh, in terms of the targets here, maybe around the 33,000 to maybe even as low as the uh, 32,000 level right here. All right, so next is I want to take a look at the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, which is the Hang Seng Index. And as I mentioned in my China videos, this index has actually been falling, uh, hitting a peak in February of this year and actually has been falling ever since. And essentially it's uh, making highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. So what's significant here, and I suspect that the uh, Hong Kong uh, exchange or the index, uh, it's going to fall even further. It broke this trend line right here. Okay, it actually tried a few times to bounce off of it. And finally broke through so I suspect that we are heading much lower on the Hang Seng index uh, target is 23,169 uh, if that breaks uh, we are probably actually going to test the lows uh, at the peak of the pandemic in March of 2020 uh, let's take a look at the Nikkei index has actually has been doing very very well uh, due to the uh, change of power in the government in Japan and investors have really been rallying up on that news and in fact uh, it hit a double top right here uh, set uh, in February 2021 and we bounced off that and obviously the Japan market wasn't immune to this um, news out of, uh, out of uh, China and it has actually gapped down so right now it's still looking pretty good um, broke this uh, downward trend line and, and heading higher so Japan may be an anomaly in terms of the global market uh, due to their uh, news and economy. So let's take a look at the FTSE, the UK. The UK index actually has been doing quite well. If you look at the uh, bigger picture, it actually has been rising very, very sharply. And what we're seeing here is just basically a consolidation sideways, right? You can see market's been very, very choppy, kind of range bound, uh, but I don't see any type of major drop in the FTSE index yet. Um, it bounced off this level, which is 6,800. And I suspect that it probably is going to go sideways. If things get worse, uh, this is the level that I'm watching, 6,804. All right, the next one we'll talk a little about is the Eurostox 50. This is the European uh, stock market index. And you can see here, it's actually um, in March, 2021, we've basically been in an upward channel, right? So. Um, and it actually did this drop here to a two day drop here actually just bounced off right of this uh, lower um, uh, parallel line. So it's basically trading in a range right now. So I suspect that again, if things don't get worse, uh, we'll bounce back up to this upper trend line here. Now let's take a look at the Sensex, which is the Indian market and the Indian market has been on fire. Uh, really, really ever since um, the summer of July uh, 2021 consolidated and really, really uh, skyrocketed up. And you can see here, this has actually been only the first two days that I've actually seen a losing um, uh, market in the Sensex. So right now you can see I drew this trend line here. It's holding support, um, but obviously again, I'm not I don't follow the Indian market too well, so I don't really know what's really going on there. But uh, you can see, I mean, since the pandemic lows um, in March 2020 of 25,581 uh, to now 58,000, I mean, it's more than doubled. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised to see this um, index, uh, you know, head lower uh, in terms of either profit taking. Um, but it's some warning signs that um, maybe a potential top is already in place. All right, let's take a look at Bitcoin. And again, Bitcoin has been treated, especially since the financial crisis in 08, 09, has a safe haven asset. And in fact, uh, it actually did not have any safe haven aspect to, uh, to this market drop. Uh, it actually had drop. Um, over 10% actually went as low as about 40,178. Now it has since recovered, you can see here, uh, it's re recovered back to around the 42,500. The key thing for me in terms of looking at this uh, from a bigger picture perspective is um, 
it's still up and ever since it tested this 29,000 30,000 level um, essentially hitting 52,000 and what I have seen here is it basically cons consolidating now it did drop below this 44,000 support level so in order for me to be bullish on Bitcoin is it really has to go above 44 if it does go above 44 and stay above it, it probably is going to be stuck in this range between 44,000 and 52,700. If it can't and can't go above 44,000, it might have a chance to test back below here. But um, you know, right now it's kind of hard to uh, to say. But uh, uh, looking at this chart here, 44,000 is a key. It has to retain, uh, regain that uh, price level. Now let's take a look at oil. Oil was not immune to a drop. Um, there are some uh, supply issues uh, going around in the world that has uh, pushed oil prices uh, really much higher. And right now it's basically just testing this range here. The thing that I'm worried about oil in the fact that there might actually be further fall is that if the markets continue to go in lower, uh, oil will probably follow. And when it, what I'm seeing here is we see a high, lower high, lower high, lower high, until it can regain above $73, then we can make higher, higher highs. Uh, but as of right now, um, I suspect that this could be a short-term top for now. Again, depending on what uh, the global economy is doing, uh, if it does, if the markets do recover, uh, we could again test uh, much higher levels for for oil. We can take a look at copper. Copper is a, a good barometer in terms of uh, uh, the global economy. And one thing that stands out for me is even though the market, the copper prices have been rising, one thing that I see in terms of this chart pattern right here is, is a descending triangle. So it's holding the support right at $409 or 410, but we've been seeing highs, lower highs, lower highs. So every time it tries to go higher at actually making a lower high. So this is bearish, meaning that um, um, prices are have a bias towards the downside. All right, let's take a look at gold. And gold has been performing uh, terribly in essentially since uh, the peak in August uh, 2020. It has actually been going down. Uh, been very, very disappointed in gold. It's not really acting too much as a safe haven. The only thing that it, that did see some type of a bounce is um, all markets all around the world yesterday had uh, gone down, but you can see actually gold actually went up. But if you can look at the overall chart, it's actually uh, not performing that well. It's actually in a symmetrical triangle right now, right at this lower range line here. So it actually bounced off this trend line right here. So I suspect that there is some, again, resistance here at 1832. If it does break through here, we'll probably test this upper trend line. But again, if you are a believer that interest rates are going higher all around the world, gold is will, will not perform well when US dollar is strong. So this is a TLT, which is the Treasury bond ETF, uh, which basically is a reflection in terms of a safe haven. You can see that the uh, bond prices actually have been rising, have actually done quite well in a safe haven. Again, whenever there is risk, uh, risk off, um, you see people dive into bonds. So one thing that I'm seeing here based on this chart here is uh, reached a low in terms of uh, bond prices um, in May. And you can see uh, it has been steadily going higher. Um, it could be due to investors appetite for much lower risk. Uh, DXY is the US dollar index and one thing uh, typically in markets where there is uncertainty people flock to the US dollar and we and also the fact that um, US is signaling that there may be uh, potential interest rate hike increases so that actually bodes well for the US dollar and you can see right here that the US dollar is about to break up 9342 that's the level and because we have the FOMC Fed decision this week, um, it could really propel it much higher. And last thing, I just want to take a look at the price of Apple stock. 
And Apple stock has actually done incredibly, incredibly well uh, since the uh, pandemic, which is right here, hit a low of uh, $52. And we're now almost three times that or, or triple that uh, 141, one, uh, almost 150. And you can see after their announcement of the iPhone 13, that is actually sells off. And again, it's one strategy that I actually talk about. Uh, sells off after that so we can see it's actually stuck in a very very wide range right so i would not be surprised it to come back to here uh, around 132 133 uh, to test this and basically be range bound upon this besides the evergrand news in china i'm watching the following key events this week in particular there are three countries that will be announcing their interest rate decisions the Bank of Japan, the rate decision on Wednesday, as well as the U.S. Federal Reserve decision on Wednesday as well. This will probably be the most important uh, interest rate decision, as well as uh, the Bank of England rate decision on Thursday. So what we want to see is, is there a general consensus that countries all around the world are going to be raising their interest rates, either due to inflation or due to the fact that the market is crashing, uh, they are going to hold back on raising rates. On Friday, we have the U.S. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell discussing the pandemic recovery. So let's hear what he has to say in terms of the U.S. economy. Now, I'll be monitoring closely over the next few days how the U.S. markets react and see whether this is a normal correction or a start of a potential crash in the markets. And if you want to follow my latest updates, follow me on Twitter at Mike Sir. I'll see you guys on the next video.